Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast. <laughs> episode 144, Larry back. And Anthony's here. Oh, look at that. And there's that mystical white tail that's been showing up lately. Yeah, that's uh, Snow. That's oh, my boy. cat. Always wants in on the action, huh? Yeah, it's amazing how she shows up just in time. <laughs> So uh, I'm glad to be back here. I was uh, under the weather last Glad week. to hear you're feeling better. Yes, thank you. Actually, I'm able to talk, which is even better. That's well, great. you know, I, that's debatable. <laughs> that was the biggest reason why I couldn't show up. I uh, just uh, had a little trouble with the talkie-talkie. Mm -hmm. But I am back. I'm ready to go. First and foremost, I want to thank Anthony Chu of the Yin and the Yang podcast for yeah. filling in. Thank you, Anthony. Anthony, yeah, Anthony and I had a really uh, great time. We had a, a really cool topic, pulled up some uh, some hidden gems in uh, our collection of uh, games. Yes. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it went really, really well. No, I liked it. It was a great topic, uh, great back to back, you know, back and forth. Uh, Chew, wonderful with the podcast. You can check out the In and the Yank podcast every Friday, wherever you listen to podcasts. And, um, yeah, it kind of made me, I wanted to be in on that one. That was, that was a fun one. Yeah. You missed, you, you missed a really good topic. So, um, I think, uh, uh, do you, I mean, do you have any hidden gems that you can think of off the top of your head? Yeah. Yeah. I got a few I could think of. Off the top oh, of okay. Head. Yeah. Uh, it sound, <laughs> you didn't prepare for that at all. No, no. Why would no I? No cat. So I get, uh-oh, is he getting ready to shut down the whole thing? Yeah. She's stepping on the keyboard. <laughs> We'll see if uh, Samson makes an appearance. I doubt it. Yeah. All right. So I, I actually, I, there are four games that immediately come to my mind when I do think hidden gems. Um, and there are two systems, the NES and the N64. So okay. uh, first one with NES. And we've mentioned, definitely mentioned a few of these before. Ironically, the, these three games are available on the NES collection on the Switch. So if you have that, you are able to play them. Okay. First one I want to mention, uh, very, very underrated, Solomon's Key. Yeah, Solomon's Key. Uh, probably one of the one of the first um, at, like kind of puzzle based games I played when I was a kid. Yeah, the, the gameplay was phenomenal. I you know, in going back and playing it, I really I never got far in that game at all. So I got to oh, work wow. with it. Yeah. Well, now you have the opportunity on uh, on the Switch. Yes, hopefully I do. Uh, next up, and I know we even mentioned this because when we when we had Rich on the podcast, uh, I remember you know when you mentioned this this game, only one thing comes to mind. You know the <laughs> uh, City Connection. Yeah, City Connection was one of those games. I don't. And, and, you know, speaking of uh, not getting far in a game, I don't think I ever got that far in City no. Connection either. And yet it didn't stop me from renting it over and over again. It was just a really, just a fun game. I, I don't even know how to describe it. You know, you have the car that kind of goes across the level and you have to, like, you're collecting things on the road. It's, it's it's some weird, and, and, but you were able to jump with the car on <laughs> yeah. the next level. You know, some crazy the, mechanics going on in there. The actual story is, I think, like, you have, like a, a paint can and you have to paint the roads oh that's yes what you're doing even though there are hearts and some weird stuff and a cat that gets in the way i don't know um but this is also a weird game that i never i'm pretty sure i never owned the game but mm -hmm. i rented it ad nauseum oh yeah so did i i mean uh, my parents should have just bought me the game at that point because i'm sure <laughs> they spent more than the 50 bucks it would have cost them Honestly, it's 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 so weird. I never remember owning it. So, City Connection, and then a the third one, which I don't think uh, we mentioned here, but when it appeared on the NES, um, uh, on the NES collection, I was like, wow, I haven't thought about this in a while. Mighty Bomb Jack. Oh yeah, Mighty Bomb Jack was a fun game. I never, I never again. It was one of those ones like I rented it a couple times, but it was never one that like you know it wasn't like a city connection for me. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, but I yeah, but I remember it, and it was uh, it was pretty decent. It was. Even to this day, I, I still haven't figured out the weaponry mechanics in the game. All I know is they oh, got yeah, to collect no. all the bombs, but God help yeah. me, I don't to kill anything. <laughs> uh, well, and that, that is the challenge of Mighty Bombs. <laughs> so those are the three NES. And then the one on N64, which I get, eh, it's a bit of a borderline as far as a hidden gem. 
but I feel like this version of the game may not have seen as much light as other versions have, and I'm talking about Pokemon Puzzle. Oh, Pokemon Puzzle. Well, you know, I mean... Borderline. I guess it's... Borderline. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, I, I would think it's a hidden gem only because it's taking a popular franchise and putting a spin on it by uh, putting it in a game you wouldn't normally see it in. Correct. That's um, a new franchise. I mean, it's, it's Tetris 2, but it's got an overlay with Pokemon. Right. But, I mean, this game, we played so much of this in college, it was ridiculous. Yeah, and I can imagine uh, just uh, competing against each other. And, and uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but you can do four players in that, right? No, not in this one. This was uh, still just two? two players. Yeah. Okay. Wait, could you do four players? No, no, straight up two players. Okay. I'm going to say two players. Anyway, uh, but yeah, it was, it was so fun. You know, very odd that you hear the Pokemon noise coming out of the the dorm room but we i dominated those tournaments so at least i got something right in college hey you know as long as the uh, pokemon noises weren't coming out of your room while you were doing something else you know <laughs> that was for another era my friend a whole mm-hmm. another squirtle era. squirtle and hey oh hey oh all right so um but those are my those are the four games that like immediately came to my mind when i think of hitting gems i'm sure there are others on other systems but definitely those four all right, and uh, you know those are those are a good four. So yeah, no, definitely some yeah. cool stuff. Um, and you know, thinking about with these games, um, you know, it makes me think of something else because a lot of these games, like I mentioned, as uh, I, I go off there, um, a lot of these games, you know, originally on the NES, and then later was able to download on a virtual console, and then later it showed up on one of the minis. You know what I mean? And then even now on the NES Classic. It's like, you know, when I'm, and this, obviously, we don't have to get into this, because everybody knows, I'm into digital downloads, we still like physical media, it's good on both sides, but with the digital part of it, yes, the, the issue with digital is as the new systems come out, depending on the backwards capability, if I still go back to, there was no backwards capability in the beginning, but anyway, um, you know, I have to keep the original systems to play the downloaded games. Right. Um, and of course, you run into, yes, you run into some of the facts where some of the games aren't available anymore, like Simpsons Arcade or X-Men Arcade, which were never had a physical release to begin with, but nevertheless. It makes me wonder, like, it, nowadays, is that kind of like the reason... And I'm not looking for, like, a direct answer, because I know we have a few different philosophies, but maybe for people listening, like, on the Switch, on the PS4 and the Xbox One, we've been seeing a lot more re-releases of older games. Now, I'm not talking, like, Final Fantasy VII, because that's a complete remake. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a different ballgame. But let's say the Final Fantasy VIII remaster, or the collection of mana that we saw, which is a Game yeah. Boy game and two Super Nintendo games. Um, or even just recently, the very first Devil May Cry has just been re-released on the Switch with, I think, very little touch-up, too. Okay. Um, but it leads me to wonder, is that, you know, is it worth it then at that point now to just rebuy the game on a newer system that will have probably some faster processing anyway, just naturally how it works, um, as opposed to keeping the system... And, you know, hoping the older system works. Again, Ant, I'm not looking for a direct answer from you, but maybe it's just kind of like to hear from the audience, to hear from the listeners on what they think about that. Um, I mean, your thoughts on, on rebuying the same game over and over. The classic example is Mario Bros. How many times have we owned that? Yeah, um, uh, quite a few, actually, um, in, in many iterations. And yeah. I think, um, well, here... Here's, here's what it comes down to. Because a lot of people um, who game don't hold on to older systems. It's like uh, a newer system comes out, you buy the newer system, the older system goes away. Um, obviously, the games you had on it goes with it. So what... So, But if you have a game that you enjoyed, for us at Super Mario Brothers or Legend of Zelda or whatever it is, um, the only way you get the opportunity to play it again is if you purchase this... Uh, Purchase it on a virtual, you know, as a virtual download. Um, is that bad? I don't think so because you do, you are, 
first off, you have a choice, right? You don't have to buy it again. But if it's a game that you've enjoyed growing up and everything like that, I think um, I think you look past the whole idea of having to buy it multiple times because it's just it's you know it's a, it's a nostalgia hit. It's fun. Um, I mean, God, the um, uh, a good example, the Sega Classics Collection. I was just about to mention that. Yes, the Sega Classics Collection has fifty Sega games on it, right? Which is physical media as well. So this doesn't really stick to necessarily, you know, digital download. Physical no, it, it, exactly. They're yeah. physical media. Yeah, I mean, um, we both bought. I think the um, the Atari Classic Volume yes. One and Volume Two. We bought that for the PlayStation or the Xbox One. I Xbox, can't remember yeah. Xbox One. So I mean. Um, and these are, you know, these are things that we've owned. Uh, when you look at the Sega Classics collection, I still own Sonic One. I still own Sonic Two, Shining Force One and Two. You know, I have a uh, Streets of Rage Two. I have a bunch of games on there still in my collection, and yet I purchased that. Why? Because there were games in that collection that I used to own that I don't have anymore. And as time goes on, a lot of these games become rarer to find. You know, it's, it's harder to find them, and they're more expensive. And then on top of that, like I said, um, you have to if you really want to play your originals, you got to keep your older consoles. And not everybody likes to, you know, keep everything because it causes clutter. Uh, it's a lot easier to just have one console and download everything on it again, even if it costs you a few extra bucks. So I I have no issue with the companies kind of dipping back into the pool for profit because um, they're not the only they're not the only companies that do that stuff. Um, you know, we uh, you talk about movies, right? Oh. Uh, yeah. How many? Yeah, I mean, when uh, when I was younger, I bought a ton of movies on VHS, and then DVDs came out, and it's like, oh crap! It's like now I'm replacing my entire collection on DVD, and then oh look, now we've got Blu-rays, uh, or for the poor people who bought HD DVD. Um, you know, <laughs> I had a few. I yep. had a few. There you go, HD DVD. Um, what should we call it? Uh, Laser discs. Betamax. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's so many different things. How about the? How about when um, you were able to buy the movies on uh, PlayStation Portable? What were they called? UHD or something? Oh, like that? UHD. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah UHD. Those, yeah. Yeah. You were buying movie. You were buying movies specifically just to watch on your portable. So, this concept isn't new, and it extends beyond, you know, beyond gaming, even beyond movies. I mean, think about um, toys. Toys in the toy store, right? Um, how many times has Voltron come back? How many times have we do we see new Transformers uh, or the retro stuff coming back? Light brights. I, oh, I see. I see. I just get, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like toys come back over and over again as well. So I mean, I just think there are a lot of mediums that do this. I don't see video games. I don't see it being a problem in video games at all. I feel like the only medium that probably doesn't do that is music. Uh, <laughs> not true. Greatest hits albums. No, 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 I meant like moving on to the new, to a new, like, m like to go from like eight track to vinyl to cassette to CD to digital to streaming, right. like, something like that. I mean, I, I want to go back real quick to a couple points that you made out. First of all, HD DVD was so bad and it failed so much. There was actually a website, HD to Blue, or whatever it was. You could actually trade in your HD DVDs. For the Blu-ray version. Wow. All right, that's like, bad. It was like maybe five bucks a disc okay. or something. I I got rid of a lot of stuff on that. Um, but Transformers on HD DVD, the extras were much better. The first Transformers live action movie it was much better on HD DVD than Blu-ray because of the extras. So, um, and then the other thing is, I want to you know, just out of curiosity, because I think we both did it for different reasons. When you go. Like, I imagine, yes, you upgraded from VHS to DVD when that came out for yourself. Yeah. Did you really yeah. upgrade, though, from DVD to Blu-ray? Not all of them, no. Okay. Um, so, just out of curiosity, you were doing it more, I guess, for the convenience or the fact that v the VCRs are getting phased out. So, now DVD players are in. You know, obviously, you got to get the new medium. Yes. Um, now, of course, Blu-rays play DVD, so I understand why no need to upgrade from there. That's exactly why I didn't. Yeah, where me, I'm upgrading really when the technology upgrades. Mm -hmm. uh, because to go from DVD to Blu-ray, you know, it's higher depth. And then go yes. from Blu-ray to 4K or, or digital download now, where a lot of it's in 4K, again, same reason. 
So there's different aspects as well as to why to buy some of the newer games. Mm-hmm. For example, the, uh, the, um, the, the, the backwards capability catalog on the Xbox One with the 360 and the Xbox original Xbox games, they actually run faster on the Xbox One because of the processing speed. So you may still have the same graphics pretty much. Even that may get smoothed out a little bit. But definitely, like, load times are faster, it runs faster, you know, things like that. Um, I think we even saw that in the limited releases uh, of the bonus discs on the GameCube for Legend of Zelda. Yes, when, like, I do remember you know, that. Ocarina of Time came out yeah. and everything. Like, they slightly, they even showed you the upgrade between the N64 and the GameCube. So, it's got its pluses, but then again, for those of us who are collecting the old systems... I guess that would be a deterrent. Hey, you got the old game, hold on to it. Especially yeah. now with the clone systems, and now that there's HDMI wires coming out for yeah. the original old systems. Yeah, exactly. But even still, um, it still may prompt you to buy newer, like another version of the game. Like again, a good example is like, let's say I don't have enough room to keep all of my systems hooked up, which I currently do not. Like, you know, I have 25 systems. Mm-hmm. I can't keep 25 systems hooked up to one television. Um, you could, so you're not trying. You could, exactly. I mean, and I did, don't, don't get me wrong, I tried. Um, <laughs> I tried a lot. Uh, but, but the reality is, it's like, you know, it just looks like a mess. Um, the fire hazard behind my television would be, you know, it's ungodly. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, I just narrowed it down to what are the systems I play the most and which third-party systems can I use for multiple, you know, multiple consoles. So, for example, like, I don't have any of my, like, my NES, SNES, Genesis, like, all those, all, all, all of those I do not have hooked up anymore yeah. because I bought the Retro Freak in Japan. And the Retro Freak plays 16 consoles in one, um, both regular console and handheld. So, because of that, I you know I saved myself the the grief of having all of these extra consoles hooked up. Now, when the Polymega delivers in August, um, I will be able to eliminate all of my CD based like a, a good number of my CD based ones, like my my PlayStation One, my uh, Sega Dreamcast, my Sega CD or JVC XI. Um, they <laughs> all um, they yeah. all. They all can go away. Well, yeah, I like that one, though. Uh, (laughs) But I can take those and I can actually, you know, I can put them away because the Polymega is going to take care of all of that. Absolutely. And and so, but at the same time, it's also like if there's a game available that that I've had before that I don't, like, let's say, for example, like, I don't have anything to play my Atari games on. So, you know, I bought those collections for uh, Xbox One. Why? You know, I have, I still have the physical cartridges, I still have the Atari, but it's just easier. And, you know, yeah. and ease of use is just kind of kind of one of the main reasons why people will buy these things repeatedly. Yeah. So, you know, and like I said, I, I think I mentioned it before, I don't remember. Uh, like, Devil May Cry 1 was just re-released on the Switch recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, was, and I was sitting there, I'm thinking about it. Like, do I get it? Do I don't get it? I'm like, I think I have, like, the Devil May Cry HD collection which was 1, 2, and 3 on HD, on the PS3, but my PS3 isn't hooked up as often as my Switch is. So it's definitely things to think about and something we definitely want to hear from the listeners, from the YouTube viewers. Uh, your thoughts on you know buying the same game over and over again for new systems. You know, even your thoughts on doing it with movies, music, you know, whatever else is out there. Who knows? We'll get a Johnny Mnemonic and plug in eventually. So, um... Let us know. Hit us, up on, <laughs> hit us up on the Facebook, hit us up on the YouTube, and hit us up on Instagram to let us know. And um, I think we're going to come back here in a moment to talk some more stuff, including a new game that I have to talk about that is just sweeping the nation. <laughs> so, folks, we actually have a new fun way. Well, we don't have, but we're part of a new fun way to listen to all your podcasts. You're going to do nothing different than you've done before, but you're going to be able to make money, quote unquote, by using this app. It's called Podcoin. P O D C O I N. 
Uh, and this is a great way to listen to your podcast and you make money by listening to podcasts. Nice. Yes. Basically, what you do is for every X number of minutes that you listen to the podcast, you earn points, pod points, if you will. And then eventually you can turn those pod points into actual gift cards, Starbucks, Amazon, things like that. Um, and for the next week, by the time this drops, we here, yeah, we here at the Retro Gamers are actually a bonus podcast where you will actually get bonus pod points for listening to us more than usual. And um, the more days you listen, you earn streaks, you get earn more points there as well. So go on Amazon, um, Amazon, on iOS or Android, uh, whatever store you shop at, go to and find PodPoint. And if you put in the referral code Retro Gamers, you can earn a bonus 300 Pod Points right then and there. Go check us out on PodPoint and any other podcast you listen to. Listen on PodPoint. <laughs> All right, so we are back and. And I don't know if you bought the game yet, but there is a new game on the Nintendo Switch that is sweeping the nation. Um, is it Clean Sweep? That would be awesome. Or maybe Minesweeper? Ooh, Minesweeper would be good, too. Go. No, but uh, clean, uh, clean Sweep was a game on the good old-fashioned Vectrix. I think I remember that. Yes. What about Supermarket Sweep? That'd be a cool game. Ah, uh, Super No. <laughs> and today's special sale, five pounds of roast beef. You know what? That that's that's a that's a game show. I'm surprised they didn't make into a video game. <laughs> it does seem to lend itself to that kind of game. Straight for the Wii. Yeah, right. That's that had everything. Um, no, what I'm talking about is Super Mario Maker Two. Uh, of course, you're talking about Super Mario yep. Maker Two. Just got released uh, this past week on Nintendo Switch. I've seen so many live streams about it. I've mm -hmm. seen people talking about it, praising it, and. If you don't have the game, definitely go out and get it. It's well worth it. All right. I do not have the game, nor right. did I buy the first one. No. Okay. Yeah. I and it wasn't, it, it wasn't because I didn't want it. It was just one of those things where it was like, um, I knew I wasn't going to have the time to build it. it okay. It's kind of like what happens with me with WWE 2K games. Now, <laughs> now when we, no, no, when we were growing up, we no, played this good fun stuff, right? And yeah. every year I buy a 2K game, right? Somewhere around 2K15 or 16, I just I stopped playing because I don't have time. And yep. then, you know, and, and those games, like there's a lot of time you have to invest in them. Now, I still buy the 2K games every yeah. year, but, but I buy them for a different reason now. Uh, yeah, some weird reason why I buy them too. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, well, I buy them because my name's in the credits now. Oh, That's okay. We are mentioning it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> my name is in the credits and blah, 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 whatever. Uh, but, uh, but um, yeah, I just, I don't have time to play them. Now, yeah. Mario Maker was one of those things where it's like the concept of designing levels for Mario sounds awesome. Do I want to sink hours and hours into a game making levels? Not right now because I don't have the time. <laughs> Fair enough. I totally get it. I yeah. had the I have the first Super Mario Maker, and yeah, I I don't think I created a single level. I mostly played the downloaded levels that other people made. Yeah, which is like the other half of the game. Um, this one though, you can do both. You can create games. We've talked about it before, two player stuff like that. You can play the games, uh, play the levels that mm -hmm. the world creates. But there's a story mode in it now that is so much fun, and not only that. Like, basically, long story short, story mode, you have to build Peach's cast, rebuild Peach's cast. By okay. doing that, you got to earn coins to pay for the labor. <laughs> um, to earn coins, you got to play through levels, you know, homemade levels. They're not long, like the original game. You know, they're fairly okay. short, but still. Um, now, the kicker is, though, these aren't just random levels pulled from the Internet, which they have a version in the game, which I'll get into in a moment. But these games are made basically by Nintendo R&D. Oh. Yeah, like actual Nintendo employees, Nintendo game makers actually made these levels, which in a way, knowing that they're made by Nintendo, puts a little bit of a cooler spin on it. Okay. So um, now with the, with, with the created levels, though, do, they don't lend themselves to story mode. It's just you play it and survive. You get through it and that's you it. You mean like right? the ones that people make? Yes. Okay, that... That's a different level, which they have um, endless mode. 
where yeah. basically you just keep playing levels, random levels pulled from the internet until you lose all your characters. Okay. But like you can keep going on. It's crazy. Like I, I did one level where I started getting a bunch of one ups. I mean, I started loading up with one ups, but then I fell into a hole, so I lost all of them because it didn't like the game didn't save at that point. Right. But, um, you know, these random levels can be very easy, and then you're jumping into literally a go kart and you just mm-hmm. plow through a bunch of goombas, and boom, you're at the end. It takes like five seconds. And then there's the other like sadistic ones that you gotta move yourself through, you know, without touching right. anything. Um, that's the endless mode, and that pulls from the internet. And so, en- so endless mode basically is Mario's version of hell. Basically, because you know, like I'm already in like that one. I played a little bit of. I'm like twenty, I think I'm like twenty something levels in. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm doing the like I started out with easy. You know, you easy, medium, hard. You work your way up. Um, right. Because some Makes of the level designs are just crazy. What people I come can up. All, I can only imagine. Um, but definitely, I, even if you're not going to create a level, if it's for story mode alone, definitely pick up the game. It's awesome. Okay. Some of the levels are just genius. And uh, you also get to rate the levels. You can download levels that you really love from people. So you can play them over and over again. So it's really cool. All right. Very cool. Well, um, you know, you almost have me convinced. And the only reason why I say the only reason why I say almost is because uh, my 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 video game budget uh, has been tapped for a while because I've been spending a lot of money uh, thanks to E3 and yeah. all the Days of Play sale, Nintendo sale, and all that stuff. And I just pre-ordered um, the Final Fantasy VII Deluxe Edition on Amazon. <laughs> Did you? Awesome! It was twenty five percent off. I was like, okay, oh, can't beat that. All right. Nope. So for for sixty bucks, which is the price of the game itself, I'm getting the game with like all with the book and everything. So I'm not gonna blame like, you on I'm that. very happy about that. Yeah. Uh, well, well, yeah. fortunately, first party Nintendo games don't go on sale too often. So no, they don't. So <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling like like if I wanted to buy Super Mario Maker right now, it would probably still cost me sixty. <laughs> yeah, probably even on the Wii U. It's crazy. Exactly, but um, yeah, but Mario Maker Two sounds like something I would definitely enjoy. So I gotta, I gotta look at yeah. that. Oh, and since I brought up Final Fantasy VII, here's something else to talk about. Oh, okay. Um, with Final Fantasy VII, so I was reading earlier this week, and this is very interesting um, for all the Final Fantasy fans who are interested in getting this game. Is that now Final Fantasy VII on PlayStation was originally a three disc game, right? Yes. Um, you play through all three discs. Different, you know, you go through, you know, you go through different areas. Final Fantasy VII that they're releasing is only the first off. It's going to be on two Blu-ray discs. Wow, that's how much it's go, is going to be Ooh, on there. That's a lot. However, it's also being released in chapters. So the game they're releasing in March is not the entire Final Fantasy VII game. Really, it's only a part of the game. They're it's oh. all and it's, and for those of you who played Final Fantasy VII, the first. I want to say the first disc, if not the entire first disc, most of the first disc took place in Midgar, which is the city they lived in. The two Blu-ray discs for the remake only takes place in Midgar. And that's it. Now, they did come out and say that they've expanded what you do in Midgar so that the entire game that you play through for this chapter is about the standard length of a Final Fantasy game, oh, which geez. means which means you're looking at somewhere between like 40 and 60 hours of gameplay for just this one chapter. So wow. this game is like, ultimately when all the chapters come out, this game is massive, like beyond not, massive. Not only that, but it's going to be pricey as well, if you think about it. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, um, I, I'm okay with it because I'll tell you why. Be, uh, the fact that the fact that they're releasing, the fact that the one they're releasing is still the length of a Final Fantasy game, I'm cool with it because I'm paying, I'm paying the money for that experience. Okay. You know, I'm getting forty to sixty hours. Now, granted, it's not the entire story, but again, it's it, Final Fantasy games are so epic in storytelling that I think breaking it up isn't necessarily a bad thing because there's a lot of story to tell and especially if they're if they're expanding the story. So perfectly fine with me. Now at the end of the day, yeah, at the end of the day it may I may have to buy three chapters so to speak to beat the whole thing. Like shiny force. 
But again, Shining Force was the same way on the Sega Saturn, you know? Uh, yeah. Shining Force 3, there are three parts to it. The part that came out in the U.S. was only part one. We never got part two and three. So I don't think I don't necessarily see an issue with it as long as I'm getting a full experience, like a full RPG Final Fantasy experience. Perfectly fine. Interesting, yeah. though. Very interesting. Yeah, right. but I thought it was very interesting, and it also just made me feel like, wow, I go... They went all in on this. Like they, <laughs> yeah. like they really went all in on this. The fact that they they made the game so massive that they have, they're breaking it into pieces. That's nuts. Yeah. Two wow, two Blu-rays. That's that's two that's Blu-rays great. for just the first chapter. That's a big Twinkie. Yeah, that, that that is a big. Tell them about the Twinkie. <laughs> you know what bugs me when I was little? How he blew cigarette smoke out of his nose. I'm like, how did he do that? Oh, I used nose to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, I was like eight, so I'm like, how do you do? That? <laughs> well, when I became an adult, I learned how to do that. <laughs> and then I quit oh, smoking. There you go. Good for you. All right. And now something else I want to mention. Um, you know, I, I like to think that a lot of our fans, I mean, both of us, as we just mentioned, are into wrestling. I feel like a lot of our fans are into wrestling as well. I want to mention this. It's I'm not going into wrestling. Don't worry for those who aren't into it. But the camaraderie between professional wrestling and video games um, this past Saturday was uh, All Elite Wrestling, the new organization, out AEW's second show ever, Fighter mm-hmm. Fest, which, give a free plug, is available for free in the U.S. on Bleacher Report Live outside the U.S., I believe, Fight TV. Cool. Uh, again, it's free, so definitely check it out if you haven't checked out um, any of their shows. And what it is, they were actually at the Fighter Festival, which I didn't realize until I was watching it yesterday when we record, um, which is a fighting game uh, expo, if you will, uh, like tournaments and, and stuff like that. Street Fighter, you know, whatever all the other ones, you know, Street Fighter is what comes to my mind. Um, so it cross works with CEO. And here's where the kind of cool camaraderie now. Um, to get kind of behind the scenes, uh, Cody, Cody Rhodes, uh, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, they're all executive producers of AEW. Mm-hmm. They're also very big gamers, especially Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is a huge yes. gamer. Um, I think his, his Twitter name is Kenny Omega Man X. So, nice. Um, uh, Cody often comes to the ring in cosplay. I know one time he showed up a Solid Snake. Um, <laughs> recently, he, yeah. Recently, which I didn't even put two and two together, at Double or Nothing, he came out kind of um, an homage to a um, Alucard from Symphony of the Night. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yep. So, uh, so that's that's pretty cool. So this Fighter Festival they had on the pre-show, they had um, it was um, Michael Nakazawa against Alex Jabaley. Some of you may know that name, Alex Jabaley. Now I don't have all my facts straight, so forgive me. But I'm pretty sure Alex Jabaley is the guy who's in charge of Fighter Festival the whole oh, wow. weekend of the of the video game part of it. And he had a match with this guy, Michael Nakazawa. Very goofy. It was what we call or what they call in the business a ha ha match. You know, right. wasn't meant to be anything, but it went longer than expected and it was no DQ, so they got away with stuff. One of the fun things they did was uh, Michael Nakazawa uh, was choking out. Uh, Alex Jabaley with a uh, GameCube controller. Nice. So he's choking him out with that. And then uh, Alex, no, and then Michael Nakazawa, I think, won after hitting Jabaley with one of those pro fighter sticks. You know, the controller. Oh, you know what? Hey, you know what? Those things are massive. <laughs> they are, actually, because it sounded pretty solid. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, the one of the main events, co main event of the show, was a six man tag team match. Um, the Laredo Kid and the and the uh, Lucha Bros against the Elite, which is the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. Now, leading now the whole idea of Fighter Fest, and I don't know if you ever saw the documentary on Netflix about that guy who tried putting on that. Um, I think it's called like Fire Festival or something. Oh no, yes, I, I, but I know what happened. Yeah, it was yeah. That, so yeah. guy tried putting on a festival, but he was a, it was such a sham. It was ridiculous. So the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega was doing vignettes that kind of played off of that. Okay. And the Bucks were like, yeah, you know, we don't we don't have our gear. So all of a sudden, this music plays. Out comes the young Bucks, dressed as Ken and Ryu from Street Fighter. 
Oh, nice. Which was very cool. They got the stands. They're doing like the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, um, the still animation. And then like eventually ends up being a plant. But like a guy like from the audience runs up the ramp. It's kind of posing with them. They're like, uh oh, someone's jumping the rail again. Lights go out. Out comes Kenny Omega dressed as Akuma. That's sweet. Fighter. That's sweet. And, and then they do the thing. Then they get in the ring. And at one point, they all do a Hadouken, if you will. Nice. Which is pretty funny. Um, and then, like, some of the bad guys would get on the mic and call in one nerds and stuff like that. So it was, it was pretty interesting, though. But it was cool to see that that merger. Um, I'm, I think... CEO, whatever the company is, who runs Fighter Festival, did a wrestling show last year, but it wasn't like with anybody. I think just like Kenny Omega ran it, but it wasn't with an organization. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this year it was really cool. Like I said, it's just fun to. It was a good show if you're a wrestling fan. Um, and but otherwise, just to see kind of that merger of uh, wrestling and video games. Check out Fighter Festival if you can. Pretty cool. All right, very cool. That, yeah, that is a nice little, uh, nice little surprise. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. And then one final thing before we go into our next uh, break here. The only other time I really remember game, other than like the whole up, up, down, down thing that Xavier Woods does, back in the day, somewhere on cable, it was like W, it wasn't WCCW, it was like WCCC or some other organization. Okay. And the wrestler was Super Duper Mario. Oh, my. Got in the ring, dressed like Mario. Could have been Captain Lou. I don't know. Um, and then been. he wins the match. And then, like, all the kids jump into the ring. And I was like, I want him to come to my neighborhood. <laughs> well, of course you do, because you want to jump in the ring. I with see. Super Mario. That was the only, oh, then in the Micro Wrestling Federation, there's um, Heavy Metal. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Okay, very cool. Check out Micro Wrestling. It is not as bad as someone thinks. No, no, no. Fun. I actually heard it was really good. It was really good. Um, so yeah, that's the only times I can remember like gaming crossing over into wrestling. So it was pretty cool. All right. Well, those are, uh, those are some, uh, some fun things yes. uh, to discuss. And I think um, we're going to, uh, based off of that, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back with some news. We actually got uh, quite a few things to talk about on the news front. Um, so yeah, so we will be back right after this. All right. Rapidly approaching August 10th and 11th. It is the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo out of Garden City, New York, at the Cradle of Aviation Museum. The retro gamers will be there. We will be podcasting. We'll be live streaming. We'll be playing games. We'll try and take over other podcasts if we can. Possible takeovers. Why not? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, hey, we, we have the power. We can do it. We do have the power. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, buy your tickets now because tickets are cheaper than at the door. Remember, that's August 10th and 11th. Yes, it's SummerSlam weekend. That's how some of you are going to remember. Um, there's tabletop games. There's pinball tournaments. And there's high score tournaments. I have to get in on the Ms. Pac-Man. i got to figure out how to do that. I want in on the Ms. Pac-Man, too, because I want to beat you. Uh-oh. Maybe we'll have our own tournament then. I think we should. We'll see. Who will be the more dominant retro gamer in Ms. Pac-Man? Me. So <laughs> go check it out. Truly see us there. Buy some great games. There's going to be some old systems set up as well, some arcade sections. Um, you can find them on Facebook, Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. Again, August 10th and 11th. Bring the kids. Have a good time. We will see you there. All right, Larry, we got a lot of news to talk about this week, actually. You know, it was funny because when I was trying to look up some stuff, I realized, um, yeah, I, did, I thought we were only going to get like a handful of things, but uh, there are quite a few things to talk about that I wanted to throw out there. Um, and uh, the first one that I want to throw out is, um, it's uh, it's localized, I'll, I'll say that uh, for sure, and but not localized to either of our cities. But <laughs> there is a retro video game, uh, re retro video game themed pop-up bar Ooh. That is showing up in Pittsburgh's Market Square. Ooh, so, appa so apparently, level it's called Level Up. It's a retro <laughs> video game themed pop up bar. Yeah. Uh, it is currently it is currently in Pittsburgh's Market Square, and uh, it's in the same location where the Game of Thrones pop up bar was in April. So uh, okay. it's located uh, in downtown Pittsburgh at uh, two sixty eight Forbes Avenue. Uh, the cool thing about the pop-up bar, obviously, they have retro video games that you're going to be playing there, but the food and drinks are also named after <laughs> uh, video game stuff. So, in other words, uh, so you can get yourself some stuffed Goombas, which are stuffed mushrooms. 
you can <laughs> you can have yourself some boneless wings that they call Yoshi Nuggets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or you can uh, you can have some uh, some tailored drinks like Princess Peach Bellini, uh, okay. Prosecco and Peach, which is Prosecco and Peach Puree. Uh, you can get a One Up, which is tequila and chamomile and lime. Ooh, um, cool. So they have a they have a bun- bunch of drinks like that. Okay. Um, they also hold some retro video game tournaments with proceeds going towards uh, different charities. All right, very cool. Different youth youth charities, which is really cool. Youths, um, and then uh, so this thing is already in Pittsburgh right now, and it's going to be there until July twentieth. So oh, if wow. you are in. The Pittsburgh area, you can hit up downtown Pittsburgh to go to the Level Up pop-up bar. Level Up hours are 4 p.m. to midnight on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Okay. And then 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. Fridays and Saturdays. They are closed on Monday and Tuesday. So I thought that was a little a cool little thing. I wonder, uh, how, right now. I wonder how far Pittsburgh is from Philly. I think they're on opposite sides of the, Op- of they're, the on opposite, they're on the opposite they're on opposite sides of the states yeah. so uh it takes you if it takes you about two hours to get to philly right so I think it's about, yeah but i think it's about another four hours to get oh, to get that all right because i'm I'll, in two weeks i'll be in philly um yep. for wrestling it's a little, but yeah it's a track yeah uh but i am gonna i plan on hitting up the uh, barcade philadelphia Ooh, so, very nice yes which is like 15 minutes uh, again a little insider info i'm going finally first time in my life i'm going to the ecw arena and uh, Barcade Philly is only like 15 minutes north. Oh, perfect. CW. For everyone else, about, I would say like ten, five to 10 minutes north of Independence Hall. Okay. And um, yeah, so I won't be far from it. So I think after the show, I'm just going to hop in an Uber and head over to Philly. And then uh, that's, well, for us, it's three down together. And uh, what, there's eight Barcades in total, I think. So, um, I trust I trust your numbers. Yep. <laughs> I got most of them on this side of the country. But. Uh, but I have my own ten minutes away. Yeah, man, that's true. Please, don't. I wish, uh, but that's cool. That's cool about a pop up. All righty. All right, cool. Um, and then uh, moving on from there, actually, Larry, this is one I'm sure you're gonna love to talk about because it's uh, cool. related to your favorite company, Limited Run. Ah, yes. Limited okay. Run Games. Yes. So, uh, it just uh, you may want to timestamp this part right now because Limited mm-hmm. Run can go straight to hell and bite my ass. All right. That's how I feel. And the thoughts and expressions of Larry Mormon are not those of Anthony Ripple or the Retro Gamers podcast when it comes to Limited Run. That is correct, because Anthony loves Limited Run games and has bought a couple of games from Limited Run, and everything has turned out perfectly, and I'm very happy. Thank you. Again, please timestamp it. They can go frick themselves. So, okay. Yes. Anyway. Well, if you, can tell them, if you can tell them where a frick is, I'm sure they might try checking it out. But I was trying to be polite, you know, just yeah. in case. And I was nope, totally of... understand. We're PG. I wanted you to bleep that part out so it sounds like it. No, uh, you know what? Look, look I'm still kind of riding on a high that last week Anthony Chu did not curse once throughout the entire episode. <laughs> yeah, that's that's big time. Yeah, that's that special. Is, so. That's huge. Um, but I will give credit where credit is due. Um, limited run, what we're about to mention is a very cool idea. I mean, they will have people virtually steal stuff out of your, uh, virtual, um, shopping cart, but what they're releasing is really interesting. Yes. So do you want, I'm assuming you want me to talk about it since I love them so much. You you go right ahead. Yeah. So limited, uh, limited run, um, actually, um, somehow managed to get the licensing rights for the Star Wars games on the NES and the Game Boy. And they're probably hoodwinking and, them. Yes. Well, well, you know. So, and if you don't know Limited Run, they usually only carry like 3,000 copies for each game that they make. So it's very, very limited edition. And what they did was they remade the original Star Wars NES game on a blue cartridge. And not only do you get the game on a blue cartridge but you actually get it in a blister pack yeah so it looks like you're getting it like the way you would buy in a star wars action figure that's what's cool yeah and that's really really cool and if you go to limitedrungames.com you can check it you can check out you know what the uh, what the game looks like and what the uh, art looks like unfortunately you cannot buy one because 
they're already sold out. Because all they care about is money, and that's all they think about. Uh, that's pretty um, much what any company is thinking about when they're selling things. But I, you know, but not just the, uh, not just that. Um, they also had a Game Boy game. Yes. They had the Star Wars Game Boy game. Again, same thing. Blue cartridge comes in a blister pack, and then there was a very special Star Wars Premium Edition, which was the Star Wars game on a physical cartridge, and then the Premium Edition included. Uh, individu- uh, an individually numbered foil stamped rigid book style box. Mm-hmm. So you actually got a box. It almost looks like a puzzle box, but it looks like a box. <laughs> uh, but the cover of the box opens gatefold style to reveal the interior contents. You got the game on the transparent blue phys- on a transparent blue physical cartridge. Uh, a collectible Star Wars coin. A collectible Star Wars handheld cartridge retro enamel pin. A full color booklet and manual, and a reversible. 18 by 24 poster. And that was all for $84.99 and is also sold out. And a lock of George Lucas's hair. No, he charges more for that. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, this is a very cool idea. Everything else they do is garbage. But this is a very cool idea that they're Mm -hmm. doing. Uh, In fact, a friend of mine bought uh, multiple copies. And I would rather pay him more money to buy one of these than the price to give to Limited Run directly. So that's oh. me. Well, that's you. And you will not be getting one, and neither will I, because I didn't know about this, and they've already sold out. So, oh, well. <laughs> and um, if, if, if I hit the open bar at Long Island Retro, maybe I'll flip it. No, I won't. I won't flip any tables. But, uh, no. but no, this is a very cool, I will admit, this is a very cool idea. One of the cooler kind of special editions that I've seen in a while. So Agreed. Definitely. Um, okay, moving on in the news front. Um, we've brought this up uh, several times, actually, uh, and there's some more news on it. But the um, the retro um, the retro uh, system Evercade, you know, yes. we've, we've talked about that a few times. And the reason why we've talked about it is because it's a handheld system. It looks very much. It looks a little bit like uh, I don't know, like a maybe a Game Boy Advance or. or, or it, it looked, I would you know, say like it's a Game Boy Advance, yeah. Yeah, it's got a Game Boy Advance look to it, uh, but you can obviously hook it up to your TV. Uh, and they're coming out with a lot of licensed games. Uh, they have Atari. They've announced Atari Collection, Interplay, Data Play, Namco Museum. Um, so they've got like these really good, and they run on cartridges. You get a batch of games on each cartridge. Mm-hmm. Um, now they have recently announced that they will also be getting new retro style indie games as Ooh. well as old classics. Really? Okay. So not only will you be get you know not only will you be buying uh, or have the ability to buy tried and true games, you will also be getting some new retro style games. That's cool. The- so you know the more I hear about this, the more interesting it sounds to me. I'm leery to say that it may only be available overseas because all the pricing I've seen has always been in euros. So that so that is my guess. I saw a couple dollars, unless they just translated it to dollars. I don't know. Okay, it's possible, but uh, every time I read an article, it's in euro. So no, I this, hear you. Yeah, this may have to be an import. Um, and you know what? But the more I see, the more intriguing it is to me. So I'm I'm keeping a close eye on the Evercade. Okay. Um, yeah. So just a little bit of news out of that. Um, Larry, I know you had a couple of things you wanted to talk about. Um, that's coming out from one of your favorite places, <laughs> Hyperkin. Oh, <laughs> Hyperkitty. Uh, yes, I said you want to talk about this is really cool. Uh, Hyperkin, uh, two things. One, they are putting out a new, well, kind of new uh, clone system, a dual clone system. So, you know, they're <laughs> like a Muppet walking past. It really is, right? Oh, and we're, about to get a, we're about to get a full Monty here in a moment. Yep. No. Go. Oh, yeah. I think. I, wow. She found a new place to sleep on my printer, right? You're going to lie down on my printer? Yeah. <laughs> I doing? hope that part's cropped out already. Nope. So, <laughs> so um, Hyperkin is uh, putting out a Retron HD2, which is basically, yes. um, it's a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo in one. Now, this is very cool. I mean, there's tons of these multi-systems uh, like this, these clones. But I've gone on record saying that the Super Nintendo uh, clone from Hyperkin is a very, very good system. Very worthwhile, very worthwhile clone. Um, admittedly, the NES one, mm-hmm. and I tweeted Hyperkin, and they still liked my comments. I guess they respect it. The NES one wasn't as good 
uh, compared to a regular NES. It was slower. The colors were a little off. But since then, like the Super Nintendo, the Genesis, the Atari one, they've been on par. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully they fixed the Nintendo issues of the Hyperkin in this new two uh, dual system, uh, which technically will play three games right out of the box, NES, Super NES, and Super Famicom. Yeah, and uh, the uh, MSRP for that is seventy four ninety nine. So that's not bad at all. Yeah, no, that's not bad. that's not bad at all, especially for HD because I think like their Restaurant Five or the Restaurant Three when it came out was like one hundred thirty or one hundred forty yeah. bucks. Yep. And one more thing from Hyperkin I want to mention real quick. Yes, that's pretty cool. Um, very, it's a small thing, but it's something which kind of makes me. If I'm going to regret not getting physical media on the Switch, mm -hmm. this is one of the things. And again, it's just a novelty. Um, they're putting out a new carry case for the Nintendo cartridges. And then what's cool about it is it's shaped like, I don't think it's the same dimensions, but it could be. But it's shaped like an old Game Boy clamshell case. Yes. That Game Boy games came in. It would hold eight Switch games, and I think it looks really cool. It actually does look really cool. Um, and considering how small Switch games are, it's nice to have a place to put them. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, no, it's really cool. And, again, it only retails for six ninety nine for a case. So if, yep. you're looking for, if you're looking for a case for your Switch games, you can, you know, pick up one of these, drop eight of them in there, and you're all set. Definitely well worth it. So Yes. All right. All right. So I've got a couple, uh, a few other cool things to talk about. Um, one of them is uh, earlier we had mentioned that um, uh, Solomon's Key, the arcade version dropped on Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. Uh, the, ar the arcade archives, right? Mm -hmm. Um On Thursday last week, another game decided to, uh, to join the arcade archives okay. on the uh, Nintendo Switch, and it is uh, Clue Clue Land. Clue Clue I Land, the arcade that. version, yeah. just dropped onto the Switch as well. So now, they're, you know, if you if you have a Switch and you're paying for the online service... Um, yeah, you can play Clue Clue Land, either the NES version or the arcade version. I still, I try to play Clue Clue Land. I know you love that game. I, I just, love I that game. I can't figure it out. You know, it was one of those games, uh, We this is another game where my parents should have just bought it for me. Because we rented <laughs> it all the time specifically because it was two players simultaneously. So my sister and I would play it at the same time. Mm. So, all right, cool. it's just, re yeah, really, really fun game. Um, and I just learned 30 seconds ago in this article that the main character in Clue Clue Land, his name is Gloopy. <laughs> Weird. Okay. G-L-O-O-P-Y. Gloopy. We'll take it. All right. Whatever. All right. Moving on from there. I got a couple of things. Uh, let's see. What do I want to... I want to save this for last because right. it's pretty cool. Okay. So... Uh, sticking with the Nintendo Switch Online Library, up until this point, we've only been getting NES games. Apparently now, uh, at Nintendo's 79th Annual General Meeting of Shareholders, <laughs> All right. the company president was asked about the possibility of retro Hold software on. from platforms. What? 79th Shareholders Meeting? Yes. I know the systems, I mean, I know Nintendo's been around for over 100 years, but... I didn't think shares were around for that long. They've been, yeah. yeah. I mean, shares have been around as long as the stock market's been around. Remember the stock market crash in 1929? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I forgot. So, you know, it's, it's like one of those things where like the 70s feel like they were only like 10 years ago. Yes. You know what I mean? Except, right, they, except they're right. 40 years ago. Yeah. Oh, God. Ugh. Yeah. All right. So um, at that yes. greeting, um, the company president was asked about the possibility of retro software from platforms like the N64 and GameCube appearing on the Switch. He said there was no new information to share, but did explain that they've been thinking about extending the online service to other, um, to other, um, to carry other games from other consoles. Okay. So, so there is a possibility that uh, we're going to be getting some games outside of the NES on the Switch Online, which I honestly think that we should. Look, they did it with virtual consoles, so... Yeah, so why not make it available? I mean, uh, uh, also what's interesting to note is that as of April of this year, 10 million users have signed up to Nintendo Switch Online. So they've got 10 million people, them. On, which is good. Yeah. Awesome. I, mean, I, I got it for three years. I only paid 20 bucks, so I don't know how... Oh, yeah, I remember that story. <laughs> no, it's a good story, too. 
<laughs> okay. Um, yes, it was legal. Um, the last two bits of information that I want to share yes. revolve around the Sega Mega Drive Mini or the Sega Genesis Mini. Okay. So we do know that there is a Sega Genesis Mini coming out here in the U.S., we also know that there is a Sega Mega Drive Mini, which is the Japanese version of it, right? And some of the games will differ. However, there is a third version coming out for the Sega Mega Drive Mini. Okay. Now, uh, this one is going to be coming out for... Uh, it's going to... The... Oh, okay. I thought you said something. I don't know. No. So <laughs> this, is, this is the... This is what they're calling the Asian variant of the Sega Mega Drive Mini. Rude. So basically, this version will be coming out in Asia everywhere but Japan. So Japan okay. gets their own version, and then the rest of Asia gets theirs. Hmm. Now, for the Asian variant, it's getting five exclusive titles. Okay. And the titles are Alien Soldier, Puyo Puyo, Ooh. Outrun 2019. Ooh, whoa. Um, nice. Sword of Vermilion. Sounds familiar. And Shining Force 2. Oh, that's cool. Yep. You mean so, I buy a, a third system now? Uh, if you want it, yeah. yeah. All right. So anyway, so there's a third version of the Sega Mega Drive Mini. And that's now, cool. prob yep, and now probably the coolest thing that I found. Uh, also revolving around the Sega Mega Drive Mini. And this will make both of us want to buy the Japanese version. And yeah. not just the regular version. There's going to be a collector's edition for the Japanese Mega Drive Mini. Dang it. And, <laughs> and what does that come with, you ask? I do okay. inquire, yes. You do, you do want to know. Okay, so in the collector's edition, you get, to, you get the... Infamous Tower of Power in miniature form. So the Tower of Power was when you were stacking a Mega Drive onto a Mega CD, add a 32X, and the lock-on Sonic and Knuckles cartridge, and then a regular cart. Wait, this is sold with the system? This is the Sega Mega Drive Mini oh. Collector's Edition. Okay. In the Collector's Edition, that's what you get. Yeah. Get this Tower of Power. What you also get that they've announced in the Collector's Edition is you get a set of 22 framed mini carts to complete the collection. Uh, no. Where's the link? So basically, all of the games, all of the games are going to come in mini. Like, you know, obviously they don't work, right? No, no, I get it. Yeah. But just you get. A framed collection of mini cartridges for 22 Sega games. You know, I got to be honest with you. The Tower of Power, um, I already ordered that separately. Yeah. From Amazon.co.japan. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, the frames... You're going to want these. I know, I know. Dang it. And you have to look at them because it's like Sonic 2, Columns... Comic Probably zone. Game, some of the games that are in there, yeah. Yeah, Gunstar Heroes. Like oh, it's, man. it's, yeah, it's Fantasy Star. It's, it looks amazing. I have All to right. buy it. Let's wrap this up so I can look at it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that was the last bit of news that I had. But you know, a lot, a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. All right. And with that, we're gonna pull into port. I think that's about it. I think this cat's ready to knock something over on your end. Well, we're... this cat is desperately waiting for me to feed them dinner. <laughs> that monitor shook there for a minute. I know it's it California. Did. She is hungry. She's also lying down on my printer. There you go. That's that's an expensive bed. Yeah, exactly. All right. And where can they find us? Uh, they can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash retro gamers podcast. You can listen to, you can listen to us anywhere where you listen to podcasts. Spreaker, Amazon Alexa, Spotify, iTunes, you name it, we're there. Um, what Larry said earlier, you can also Podcoin. download Podcoin and make a little money while yeah. you're listening to any podcast, and, and, you know, yeah. including ours. Uh, there's a bonus if you listen to ours this week, so yeah. check that out as well. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram at uh, Retro Gamers Podcast, and uh, you can watch us on YouTube. Just do a search for the Retro Gamers Podcast, and you can watch us there. 
Yes. Uh, you can also email us at uh, email at theretrogamers.com. Yes. And uh, with that, we will end it. And it's great to be back on the show. I love doing this with you. Yep. And also, uh, before we disappear, um, we wish everybody a very happy Fourth of July, happy Independence yes. Day, because that is this week as well. Yes. Day off. Cha-ching. Yes. And I am going to be celebrating it by leaving for China next weekend. Are you leaving on the 4th? Uh, no, I'm leaving on the 7th. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're going to China. China. All righty. That should be yes. fun. And oh, it will be. If I get any free time, I'll be retro game shopping. In China? Good luck. Yes, I know. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm more, I'm more excited about the, con- the the prospect of finding, like, bootleg games. You oh, know, like su- oh, like oh, Super oh. Dario Brothers or something <laughs> like that. Some weird knockoff system. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll come back with a Nintendo. There you go. We'll take it. Yes. And uh, with that, folks, we're going to end it. And we will catch you right here next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.